God loves you and I so much that he does not want any of us to have any hesitation to reach out to him. And because of this, he had to remove all the barriers and protocols that would hinder us from reaching him. That is the reason Christ came as a man to remove the barrier that we would fight to try to be deserving of his love and his attention. Now in today's video, I want to speak about the fact that there is no protocol required in reaching God. All God says is, come. Come unto me, all you that are weary and are heavy burdened. Now, I love it so much in the message translation. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and walk with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you will learn to live freely and lightly. Now, this is God's invitation to you and I. No protocol required. Come. In times past, I used to think that I need to get myself to a certain place before I am deserving of God's attention. I need to be clean or do a certain act to deserve God's attention, to be able to come to pray to God, to be able to approach God, because I felt like God was unapproachable by me. And this, I feel like, could be as a result of seeing the interaction in our world with men. Because to meet a man of high value, of high importance, you have to get yourself a certain way. You have to behave a certain way. You have to almost like fake it. Be perfect before you can approach that man. Imagine you having a meeting with the president, the preparation you put into it, the perfection and how you try to fake a kind of outlook so that you'll be presentable before the president. Now, God is not like man. He is not like this. He says, come. Just like you are. You're wearing rags. Come to me. Oh, you're dirty. I am the bath. I will give you bath. I will give you rest. Now, this is the invitation. There is no protocol required. From the realm of being a man, there is a protocol. Because you have to pass through the secretary. You have to pass through the security. You have to pass through steps. So there is no seven steps. 10 steps, 100 steps to come to this God. He says, just come. Have faith. That is what it takes. And the second point I want to say is, he says, call unto me and I will answer you. He says, call, shout, yell at me. Anyhow you want to call, there's no particular protocol of like, this is the correct way to call unto God. This is the correct way to approach God. Just as you are, in your situation, in your particular, you know, expression, if you yell, there's no problem. If you are calm, there's no problem. If you are soft, there's no problem. Now, this is where I get to the point of when people pray to God, it is not everybody that knows how to yell in prayer. But then, in the evangelical and the Pentecostal environment, they would feel like if you're not yelling and praying with passion, in terms of like sweating, then you're not praying to God then you are playing, then God is not hearing you. And I will beg to defer and say, no, there's no particular protocol for God to hear. I must not sweat all over because maybe I've come to a place in my faith that I believe that I can just be whispering with my father, Daddy, I am feel anxious right now. Daddy, I'm not feeling well. Daddy, this is how my heart is beating. I have a heartbreak. I have this condition. I hope you heal me. I hope you save me. But there are people that would come and start shouting, Daddy! Different expression that God still accepts us just like we are. Call unto me. All in it is that call. Now, a story in Mark chapter 10 talks about Bartimaeus, a blind man, whom when he heard that Jesus was passing, he said to himself, I'm just going to yell my lungs out. Like, <laughs> he started yelling. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus walked past. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, 
he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet. Many of the people yelled at him. Now, this is the place that got me to think, this is where people think, that's not a protocol. That is not the right way to shout at Jesus. Why would you yell at him like that? So keep quiet. Don't do that. God doesn't accept that. But he said, many of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. Sorry, I'm yelling on the video. I'm just trying to express the way it is. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. But he was only did one thing, he called the best way he could. And Jesus saw his heart, he saw his passion, he said, let him come here. So they called the blind man, cheer up, they said, come on, he's calling you. Now look at the same people that were telling him, would you be quiet, keep quiet. Why are you shouting? Why must you pray like that? Or why are you too quiet? Or why are you acting like you're too cold? Or why are you... But there are the same people that said, come, he's calling for you. Now, this is where I say, there is no protocol required. The only thing I would call that is a protocol required is your faith. Because Jesus pointed it out here, when he asked the man, what do you need me to do for you? What is your request? The man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go, for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see and he followed Jesus down the road. So evident. No protocol on how to call, just the faith in your heart. Scripture already makes us to know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And here it says in Hebrews 11, 6, And without faith living within us, it would be impossible to please God. For we come to God in faith, knowing that He is real, and that He rewards the faith of those who passionately seek Him. That is the only protocol. No other human protocol required. No protocol of like I need to confer with my pastor before I get God's attention. God calls us to a place that we can come to him, come to the throne of grace and mercy and obtain favor and help at any time that you are in need. The scripture lets us know that there is no protocol required. God does not need you to fast for three days before he gives you his attention. If you are fasting, that should be with the aim of getting deeper with him, of getting to know his heart the more, not for you to get him to look at you or be favorable to you. He does not need those protocols. The third thing I want to elaborate here is the fact that God is not bothered by you coming to him. Sometimes we could feel like you are bothering God because you are asking too much. You asked yesterday. You came to him yesterday, you presented your anxiety yesterday, and now today you feel anxious again. So you feel like, should I still go to God? Should I still approach him today? Is it even legit for me to approach him again? And he says, yes, come. I'm your daddy, I'm your father. You belong here. You have a home in this place. Why would you feel bad going to your dad? This is your dad. The only person you can bother at any time without even, even giving a second thought, is your dad. When I see a girl child and the dad and the way they disturb their dad, want to play with the dad, yeah, as a human, you're tired, you're weak. But with God, he is inexhaustible. So it would be an insult for you to think that God is exhausted, you should not go to him, that too many people have prayed to him, so you should not add your own problem to the list of what he has to deal with. No. God is all-powerful. El Shaddai. He is in full capacity to take care of every single person in the world at the same time without him getting confused or bothered or troubled. Now in scripture, parents brought their children to Christ and the disciples were like, what are you guys doing here? Don't you know you are bothering him? That thing really got Jesus pissed. Scriptures in Mark chapter 10, 13 says, One day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. As if Jesus told them that the parents bringing their children was bothering him. And scripture says that when Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, 
Let the children come to me. All God is telling you is, come, call to me. Don't feel like you are bothering me. I'm not bothered by you. I love it when you come to me. I love it when you even think you're bothering me. Bring it to me. Come to me with your burden. Come to me with your load. Don't think this load is too heavy. I don't need to disturb God with this because nothing is too hard for God to do. And with God, all things are possible. You have to get this in your head and know that the only protocol is your faith. Now, the last thing I would say in this line is the fact that if you check through scripture, people that thought they knew the protocol never met God. They missed God. The people that were unlikely, that felt like they would not be able to reach God, reached God. Someone like the rich young ruler, he said he had kept the Ten Commandments from his youth, but yet he missed God's heart. He said, I want to be good. Good master, what shall I do to be good? Jesus told him, oh, you've kept the commandments. He said, all of that I did for my youth. He thought he's perfect. He thought he has kept, he has met all the requirements to approach God. He thought he's in a place that he could come to God and get his attention, but he missed God. And when Jesus told him, you have to sell all your goods to the poor and come to me, he was dejected. He turned back. Nicodemus, a teacher of the law, a Pharisee, came to Christ at night and told him, what must I do to gain eternal life? He said, you have to repent. You have to be born again. He missed the whole point and said, how can I be born again? Go back to my mother's womb. Martha, the sister of Mary, she told that by her service to Christ that she would win his attention. At a point, she got pissed off, like almost like attacking the Lord. Don't you care that my sister is actually doing the wrong thing that she's sitting here and you allow her sit here while I am serving alone. I'm cooking alone in the kitchen. Now, if you think that by your service you get God's attention, those are not the protocols that God asks to. He never asks for that. All he said is, come, call to me. Don't think you're bothering me. That is why someone like Mary, the first time Mary met Christ, she came as a sinner woman, a prostitute, cried at his feet, with her tears, washing his feet, using her hair to wipe his feet. And then Christ accepted her like that. When Jesus visited them, she spent time giving Jesus her attention. That was all that was needed, listening to him. Zacchaeus, an unlikely man, went to look for Christ when he heard that Christ was passing and he climbed on top of a tree. That was not a protocol. That, that would have been like, what is this man doing? You know, a sinner. A tax collector that his people despised him, but Jesus looked up, saw his heart because he saw his faith. He could see your faith. Don't think that he is overwhelmed by the number of people that call. It's your faith that matters. He sees your heart, he sees your faith, and he's eager to get you to be with him. Jesus called unto Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19 and said, Come, I will dine with you today. And people there were displeased. This man is a sinner. You don't even know whom you are visiting. And Jesus knew exactly whom he was visiting. Because he was not operating with the mindset of the world protocol. Like we would put it. Because according to the world, Zacchaeus was not deserving for Christ to spend time with. Same thing with the scripture we read in Mark about Bartimaeus. Blind man begging by the roadside. What is it to do with Christ? Why are you calling him? Keep quiet, young man. These were the unlikely ones, but they got his attention because they, they were just acting out of their faith. Unlikely faith. Same thing with the woman with the issue of blood. She was so unlikely, she wasn't supposed to be out there in public, but she took the risks. Had faith that when she touches Jesus, she will be healed. And then she touched and she was healed. Unlikely. A crowd was strong in Jesus looking for his attention, trying to get his attention, they couldn't. But a woman with faith, which tells me faith is the only protocol required to actually get God's attention, to actually get what you need from God, to actually have intimacy with God. And I hope that this video is a blessing to you. I hope that you are blessed listening. Thank you so much for listening to today's video. It is a pleasure of mine to have you watch. And I would like you to 
check other videos in this channel subscribe to this channel if the content is blessing you and share this video give it a like and let other people know and see you in my next youtube video i am uwem akban sorry i'm telling you my name last that is how it goes for today bye